Albert Einstein, Richard Branson, Bill Gates, John F. Kennedy, Tony Robbins, Michael Phelps, Will Smith. That sounds like a list of highly successful titans in a variety of industries. What else do they have in common? Well, they all have ADHD, but you don't hear much about that, do you? You know what you hear even less about? The successful women navigating ADHD. And that's exactly why I started this podcast, ADHD for Smartass Women. I'm your host, Tracy Otsuka. I'm an attorney, not a doctor, a lifelong student, not a coach. I'm also the creator of Cortography, a patent pending system that helps people like you figure out what they should do with their life. And we're here today to talk ADHD, your superpowers, your symptoms, your workarounds, and how you proudly stand out instead of trying to fit in. I credit my ADHD for some of my greatest superpowers. And you know what? I spy a happier life for you, too. So without further ado, a shiny new episode is starting now. Hello, I am Tracy Otsuka. Welcome to episode 15 of ADHD for Smartass Women, why major life decisions are so hard for everyone, but especially for us. And I decided to do an episode on this very subject because in our Facebook group, ADHD for Smartass Women, there was a woman, Amanda, who posted this post. I've been incredibly unhappy this last year, and I talked to my doctor and she suggested that it might be related to my ADHD. I've been doing the same thing for the last 10 years, and this last year wasn't very challenging. She suggests that perhaps I've grown bored with my career and need a new or different challenge. There are many other options available right now, but I don't know what direction to go. I'm afraid of letting my emotions guide this decision. Am I afraid because of past impulsive decisions or just because change is scary? What I want to do is repeat those last two sentences. I'm afraid of letting my emotions guide this decision. Am I afraid because of past impulsive decisions or just because change is scary? Amanda, that's exactly what you should do. Let your emotions guide your decision. But let's back up and let's start out by talking about why some decisions are just so hard to make and why others aren't. And then we're going to go into why making major life decisions using emotion is so important. Okay, so let's take a typical subject where decision making can be difficult for us. Career. It's just like in Amanda's case, right? So let's say you're trying to figure out if you should go to law school or should you get a master's in public health or should you intern for a year at a law firm? And then what I want to do is compare that big decision with a decision that we basically make every day. This is a silly decision that, frankly, between you and me and everybody else who's listening to this podcast, I always struggle with. And it's this silly. Should I order the spinach and ricotta stuffed ravioli with brown butter sauce and wild mushrooms? Or should I order the gnocchi with house-made fennel sausage, roasted mushrooms, black truffle butter, and grana padano cheese? This was literally me last Friday night, but this time I was trying to figure out if I should get the chicken pot pie or the polenta with the roasted vegetables. And this wasn't a question in my mind of which one was healthier. I didn't really care. I wanted comfort food, and both of them sounded great. I just couldn't decide which one would be more satisfying to me. I couldn't decide which one to order. And I have to tell you that everything this restaurant makes is absolutely outstanding. So whatever I ordered, I knew it would be good. Yet here I was, as usual, taking forever to order my silly dinner. What's up? Okay, clearly one of the decisions that we need to make is a big decision. We're talking about what should I do career-wise. The other one is a really small, insignificant decision that we make every day all the time. What should I order for dinner? What should I eat for dinner? But still, both of those were hard decisions to make. I wanted to figure out what is it about some decisions that make them hard? Well, hard decisions are hard because the outcome isn't measurable right then and there. 
you can't apply a standard, you know, that this is greater and this is lesser or this is equal. And so you're afraid you're going to make a mistake. You're worried that you might not have all the information you need to make a good decision. So you wish you could see into the future, but you can't. The decisions that are hard to make are the decisions where the outcome is not certain. Of your three career options, getting a master's in public policy, going to law school, interning at a law firm, you really don't know how any of those scenarios are actually going to play out in your life. You can't see into the future and you can't try all three of these things out at once to see which would be the better one. What if you make a mistake and you don't choose the right one? And the same thing with the stupid pasta or the silly pot pie and polenta with vegetables, although clearly with a lot less risk. I'm going back and forth and I can't make a decision because I don't know which one I'll actually like better. And I'm afraid that I'm going to order the wrong thing. You know, I've often thought, wouldn't it be great if there was a restaurant like an ice cream shop where you could go in and you could sample three entrees and then you could decide which one to choose? Easy decisions are easy, whether they're big or small, because one decision is clearly better than all of the other ones. It's scientific. It's data-driven. Or like in our ice cream shop example, you're certain that the decision you're making is the right one. You can actually take measurements. For example, a grade of A is always going to be better than a grade of C. 100 is always going to be more than 10. Two miles will always be farther than one mile. These things are all measurable. There is a standard. So let me give you a further example of a hard decision. Let's say you've been offered two really great jobs. We're still in the career area here. And they both have the exact same salary, but they're both in equally awful locations. You don't want to go to either one of those cities. But let's say job number two is trying really hard to recruit you. So they offer you $10,000 more. So then that should be a total no-brainer, right? And completely tip the scales in favor of job number two. Here you have two jobs in equally icky cities. You don't want to go to either city, but one of them pays $10,000 more. I mean, clearly job number two is the better offer. It pays $10,000 more. Then why doesn't it always feel like that would be the better decision to make, that you should choose job number two? Why does it still feel like it's such a hard decision? Because again, hard decisions have unknown outcomes. You could get to job number two in the location, or the job could be even worse than you could have ever imagined. Or you could take job number one and discover that you love the people so much that the location doesn't even bother you. Or you could find a home right across from a beautiful park and realize that the location isn't nearly as bad as you thought it would be, and you actually have come to kind of really love it. This is really what's going on. Hard decisions involve values and purpose. When you make hard decisions, you have to take a stand for who you are, what you're for, and what you're against. You have to take a stand for what's important to you and what you value even when you're talking about something as silly as pasta. And this is the problem. We've been trained to make decisions based on logic, analysis, and research. And that's where we get it really wrong. You know, we're conditioned to make difficult decisions using our brain instead of our body, our heart, our intuition, and our senses. This is exactly how we make bad decisions, and we know this intuitively. We second-guess ourselves. We make everyone else the expert. This job pays more, so it's got to be better than the job that pays less. This job has more prestige, so it's the one that I should choose. When you make bad, hard decisions, it's because you make them using logic. And this is what I need to tell you. Don't look outside yourself to make one decision or another when you are making major life difficult decisions. You already have all the answers inside yourself, whether you know it or not. No one, 
no one is ever going to be a better expert on you than you. Get out of your head, ignore that rational brain, and get into your body. Pay attention to your body and ask yourself, how do you feel in that decision? Ask yourself, which choice inspires you and gives you energy in your body? Don't let others make these decisions for you because no one but you knows what the right decision is for you. If we're constantly listening to everyone else and taking their advice, we're making decisions that would be perfect for them, but not necessarily for you. You have to know exactly what you value and at a minimum, the neighborhood where your purpose lives. It's very helpful to reframe this idea that we often have in our head that we're going to make a mistake. Because I have to tell you, there's no such thing as a mistake or a bad decision unless you keep doing the same thing over and over again and you hate the results. Okay, then it's a bad decision. But if you make a decision and it doesn't work out the way you'd like, now you just have more information. You've learned more about yourself and you're more capable of making an even better decision next time. So let's go back to our career example. You're asking, should I choose law school, a master's in public policy, or an internship? Regardless of which choice you make, it's going to lead to all kinds of opportunities that you would have never had but for the fact that you made the choice that you did. The thing is, you have to actually physically do something by making a decision. Life experience will guide you, and it's going to teach you what you should do more of and what you should do less of. The key, though, is you have to pay attention to your body, your energy, what lights you up, what makes you feel good. When you're in that zone where you're feeling that you're doing exactly what it is that you should be doing, and then you need to do even more of it. No one else has that information about you but you. You know, rational thought, it makes life really repetitive, boring, and uninspiring. You know you do what everyone else does, and you think what you've always thought. You pick up opinions from all the experts, your parents, your teachers, your friends, your boss, the media, society, and again, all you're doing is just copying what everyone else is doing. There's no innovation. There's no intuition. And this is how we end up with uninspired attorneys and doctors and engineers that hate going to work every day and really should have considered doing something else with their lives. Now, if you choose one of those careers and you do it for a couple of years and then you look for something else, that's different. There, you're actually building life experience. You're paying attention to how you're feeling and you're using this life experience in law or medicine or engineering or nursing or whatever, and you're parlaying it into something that quite possibly could be a better fit for you. And just so that we're 100% clear, I want you to know that not making a decision, and this is a big one, and letting life or other people make decisions for you that's making a decision. It's also the fastest route to unhappiness, and it is the plight of the aimless and the purposeless. Staying in a job that bores you to death is a decision. Staying in a body that you hate is a decision. Staying in a relationship that's abusive is a decision. We're talking about silence and inaction. These are decisions. Making hard choices is where you discover not only who you really are, but who you could actually be. Big life decisions, they need to be made according to what you actually value, not based on what you think you should do or what others think you should do. So again, you have to ask yourself, how do you feel? So when Amanda posted her comment or her post in our Facebook group, One of the other members, Jennifer, came back with, you know what? We're fierce when we are doing something we love. She is absolutely right. Our ADHD brains, they are wired for interest. And so my first question to Amanda was, are you interested at all in what you're doing? And so if she comes back and she tells me no, then my question for her is, what are you really interested in? Make a list. And then pick one of those interests 
the one that lights you up, that makes you feel like you're right where you should be, where there's all this good energy around. And if you've got two that you feel that way about, stop overthinking it. Just pick one of them. You're going to take that one interest that you really think you'd like to pursue and you're going to make another list. And this time you're going to list all the things that you would need to do to move that chosen interest forward. Then you're going to pick the one thing on that list that scares the crap out of you. But it's a good fear because, yeah, you know, change is scary. And this is all about fear. So find that good fear, something that you just know you really want to do, but it really scares you. And then what you're going to do is you're going to test. You're going to do that one thing on your list that you really want to do, but it terrifies you. And after you do it, not during and not before, because you're just going to feel terrified while you're doing it and before, after you're done doing it, you're going to ask yourself, how do I feel? The chances are that you're going to feel proud. You're going to feel more confident. You're going to feel happy. And you're going to feel motivated to continue. And that's a sign that you are doing the right thing and something you should be doing more of. By testing, what you're doing is you're teaching yourself how to increase your motivation. Look, if you're working in an area of interest, you know, we know with our ADHD brains, when we are working in an area of interest, we can pop into hyperfocus. And once we start, we can't even stop because we're so interested. So what we're doing is we're working on building positive emotion. And again, with the ADHD brain, we know that positive emotion triggers motivation. You're the expert on you because only you are the one who can feel this positive emotion. You have this built-in rudder in your body, your heart, and your intuition. And over time, what's going to happen is you're going to learn to pause and really pay attention to that intuition, that positive emotion, that expert inside of yourself, and you're going to rely less on others' opinions and less on what you think you should do, those facts, those figures, those statistics. And in turn you're going to start making much better decisions for you. As always, you are listening to ADHD for Smart Ass Women. If you liked what you're hearing, I would so appreciate if you drop us a review. If you'd like to know more about me, our patent pending cartography system that teaches you how to align who you are with what you do, or if you have a comment, a guest you'd like me to interview, or a topic idea for this podcast, go to my website at tracyoutsuka.com, click on the podcast in the navigation bar, and you are going to see a little microphone to your right where you can leave me an audio message. You can also reach out to me at tracy at tracyoutsuka.com. Thank you so much for listening, and I will see you next week. You've been listening to the ADHD for Smart Ass Women podcast. I'm your host, Tracy Atsuka, and we're available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Play. If you liked what you heard, we sure would appreciate a review. And not coincidentally, ADHD for Smart Ass Women, well, that's also the name of our free Facebook group. Go look it up. We're a totally smart ass community of successful, ambitious women who share our ADHD wins, questions, and workarounds. We'd love to have you join us. You can also find all my details over at tracyoutsuka.com. Don't forget, I spy a happier life for us, and I'll see you again next week.